Hi, I'm Lucas Schostrom, Farmer Relations Manager with Midwest Dairy. Welcome to our Sustainability in Action series. We're going to tell you today about some of the projects, partnerships, and research we're doing in terms of sustainability with your dairy checkoff here at Midwest Dairy. These things will show us how to improve conservation, how we are getting closer to our net zero initiative, which includes greenhouse gas neutrality, water quality and quantity metrics, and also biodiversity. One of the projects we're excited to talk to you about is the Headwaters Agriculture Sustainability Partnership, which is a program here in central Minnesota made up of mostly row crop and dairy farmers that have integrated systems. We're taking measurements on those farms, and one of the ways we're doing that is through what's called the ROI, or Return on Investment Project. We're going to hear from Jillian next to learn more. Hi, I'm Jillian Greenberg, and I work for Environmental Initiative, an organization that brings together people from all different perspectives to improve the environment, the, our land, our water, our air, while connecting with our communities. One of the projects that we organize and facilitate is the Headwaters Agricultural Sustainability Partnership, or HASP for short. This project brings together partners from the private sector, the public sector, and the government, universities, nonprofits, and farmers to look at ways that our farm community can improve the natural environment, but also stay financially viable on their operations. One of our projects is the Return on Investment Project, or ROI for short. This project works with farmers to collect financial and environmental data from their operations and figure out how environmental and conservation practices are impacting the financial viability of their farms as well as their communities as a whole. My name is Keith Olander. I'm Executive Director of AgCentric. I work for Minnesota State College Universities. AgCentric is a center of excellence for agriculture. Within our system, I work across several college campuses, and in this case today, we're going to talk about farm business management and the economic metrics for farming. So my involvement with HASP came about from the Minnesota Milk Producers Association with an invitation to bring in farm business management. And the goal here is to look at the environmental metrics that are occurring and being brought forward on the farm and improvement and paralleling them to economic metrics, which in farm business management, our thing is, our mantra really is about uh, managing what we measure. And so in that case, uh, we wanna make sure that farmer is measuring all costs, all uh, revenue, and then, of course, bringing that into break-evens on a commodity basis. And that's really critical when we think about other farmers adopting practices. They're always going to want to know what's the bottom line or how does it impact my bottom line. And so that's really some of the answers that we're driving toward through this particular HASS project. Hello, I'm Dennis Fuchs, Administrator of the Stearns County Soil and Water Conservation District. The uh, Soil and Water Conservation District was very interested in participating in HASS because it's just another avenue to help us get conservation practices applied on the landscape. And it's just an opportunity through our return on investment study to also show that uh, conservation pays. We help uh, farmers collect data, including uh, uh, soil carbon, uh, water quality, and yields, where they can take this information and put it into the return on investment spreadsheets to determine how much these uh, practices help uh, pay and improve water quality. Farmers in the Return on Investment Project implement a range of practices, including contour strips, buffer strips and grassed waterways, reduced tillage or no-till, cover crops, nutrient management, and stacking slabs. These practices have led to higher soil organic matter and lower soil erosion on ROI farms compared to regional benchmarks. I'm Steve Schlungen. I'm a dairy farmer from Albany, Minnesota. Back in 1986, I uh, quit my job at the Cold Spring Granite Company, bought a herd of cows, and I moved to this farm and rented the barn and started uh, dairy farming. So I've been in the business for 30 plus years, and we ended up buying this farm after a while and building many buildings on it. And um, so between my wife Cheryl and our four children and five grandchildren, this is what we do. So I had got involved very early um, in the HASP program and actually it was a year or two before it was even called HASP. And I just thought it was important to be at the table with this group of people to make sure that any projects that they were looking at helping to do with farmers, that it made sense for farmers to do and that um, it would be good for the environment and would be good for their bottom line. Because if you don't stay in business, it doesn't do you any good to, to do all this stuff. So 
Um, over the years then, we got more involved with the ROI project, the return on investment, where we're seeing the numbers coming back from what we invest in our crops and what we get out of them. And those numbers are pretty positive. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the practices that we are implementing on our farms. My name is Tom Gregory. I farm with my brother, Ed, and my son, Nick, over by Kimball. We have Mill Creek Dairy. We have we, uh, dairy with about 600 cows and, and 600 head of young stock to accompany that. We got involved in HASP about two years ago. It was a new program, and I always welcome these programs, and it was a chance to dig into our, our farming operation and, and detail it. And from, from that, I've been able to improve on like the way we handle our manure, the way we handle our cattle. In the HAS program, at the end of the year, we get, we get a printout and, and there's graphs on there and the graphs show how well you did in corn silage, how well you did with greenhouse gas, how well you did with carbon and, and, and the alfalfa salt. All the identities that you're involved with, it, it shows how you rate to other people and, and where you probably should be. Uh, so there's so many things with the graphs that can help improve the way you farm. What we're seeing when we look at the various sorts out there specific to the environmental metrics, and I'm gonna pick on water quality certification. Right now we've got about 65 farms in that particular sort, and they're outperforming their peers uh, quite significantly, between 10 and 20% net farm income on a regular basis. I'm really excited this year to have trend data, so that gives us a three-year establishment in that, uh, to look at you know, how economically, when they're adopting different environmental practices, how does it match against their peers? And at this point, we're seeing them outperform. And HASP is no different. In this case, we only have three farms that were in the pilot project, and they're outperforming their peers as well in the same metrics. We've done an awful lot. Uh, I could list 30 or more, probably, conservation practices that we've used over the years. And I don't think that'll ever end. I think it's just a matter of continuous improvement and that we just got to be looking for things that that can work on our farms. And not everybody can do everything, but I think everybody can do something. And I think um, we all just try to do our part and share our story because our neighbors trust you when you tell them something works for you or something didn't work for you. And I don't think there's any better way to share good stories than by sharing your story with your neighbors and whoever uh, is willing to listen, so. As we move from the pilot phase of this project, where we had three farms involved, to the expanded phase, where we'll be collecting data from at least 10 farms every year, we'll be able to tell larger and more impactful stories about how conservation practices on farms are impacting the financial viability of these farms, as well as the environmental impacts they're having on their communities. Thank you to the partners and to the farmers who are helping make this happen. What we've learned already is farmers are implementing these conservation practices, ready to implement these conservation practices, or just simply need to learn more about them. To take your next step, please reach out to a farmer relations manager like me, and you can learn about where these resources are and how Midwest Dairy is reinvesting your checkoff dollars into projects like these. The HASP ROI project is something we're really excited about to move conservation forward here in the Midwest Dairy region.